In today's video, we're going to take this tree and turn it into this tree. But first, I've got to get these decorations off. Hey everyone! You may be wondering, are we really going to take this green limp tree and turn it into a flocked vibrant one? Yes, and I'm going to show you how. But before we get into the video, for those of you that are new to my channel, hi! My name is Catherine, and I love to make videos on decorating for the holidays. I also sometimes make videos on fashion and beauty. So if you like any or all of those topics, then I hope you'll consider subscribing. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. The YouTube algorithm seems to really like it when you do, and, well, so do I. Now let's spend a moment talking about what we're going to do. So my plan is to reuse some of the black and white buffalo check items from my following tree and incorporate them into more of an updated look for my winter woodland tree, which is a tree that I've done for several years and is actually one of my more popular videos here on YouTube because I show you how to take a green tree and turn it into a flocked one. But because I'm using black and white, I'm only going to use some of the items for my winter woodland tree. I actually used the rest of those items on another tree that I've already filmed and have up on YouTube, and I'll go ahead and leave the link to that down in the description box below. But as with that tree, I am incorporating some new items into this tree as well. So in addition to using my existing flocked and snowy items, I'm also reusing all of my red items, a lot of the burlap, and some of the ornaments. But then what I'm adding in are some new buffalo check ornaments, some new ribbon, and some picks and stems. Now let's go ahead and get started with the first step. Because this tree is already set up, this step does look a little different than it normally would. What I'm doing is I'm adding additional lights and I'm adding them more to the inside of the tree. For this, I like to add twinkle lights as I really like how it gives the tree a beautiful kind of shimmery glow from the inside. I'll be sure to link to my favorite set, which is the same set that I use on most of my trees and have for years. As I'm going along, I am kind of refluffing where the tree needs it. Then I'm going to leave a few feet of this additional strand of light at the top so I can incorporate it into my tree topper. Well, we're done with the first step, and so far I've managed to only break one nail. Does anybody else wreak absolute havoc on your hands and nails when you're decorating Christmas trees? If so, leave me a comment down below and let me know I'm not alone. But now we're going to move on to the next step, which is really the transformative step of this tree, and that's making it look flocked. And this is actually ridiculously easy to do. So what we're doing is taking what used to be two six-foot flocked garlands that I have previously cut up into, you know, maybe 18, 24-inch sections, and we're going to place these on what I like to call the shelves of the tree. When choosing garland, there's a couple of things that I think really help. One is look for garland that incorporates a couple of different types of greenery because um, that typically makes the tree look a little more real. And then also, if you can, find some flocking that you know has some different textures and consistency because that mimics a little bit how more how the snow would look. So what I'm going to do with these sections is I'm going to go ahead and pull all of the flocked greenery forward and then I'm going to take it and I'm going to look for one of those shelves and I'm going to just kind of curl this to match the round shape of the tree and I'm going to find one of those shelves I'm just going to kind of pick up the branches above and I'm going to place that in and then kind of pull these back down making sure that those branches are coming out because that's most closely what mimics the way a tree actually gets snowed on right it's the branch tips on the outside that really collect that snow and basically I'm just going to work my way around the tree with these 18 to 24 inch sections finding those shelves that look like it's where the snow would actually hit and slip those in. I get asked from time to time if I know of a good flocked garland, so I will see if I can find a good set and link it down below if so. I did know of a really good set a couple of years ago on Amazon, but it was a third party seller. They sold out and I haven't found it since, but they can be a little bit hard to find, so if I find one, I'll definitely link it. the tree, what I'm going to do is take some of my previously snipped off 
tips where I've taken, you know, just one or two clusters and snipped them off. And I'm actually going to stick those in sections towards the top of the tree because that makes it look a little more natural than trying to use those longer sections. I am going to save a few for the very end when I have the rest of the tree decorated and I need to figure out where I might need to plug in some holes. You'll notice though that I'm not going up to the very top of the tree. That's because I'm going to have a topper that comes down a little bit, therefore I don't need the branches to be flocked there because it's basically going to get covered up. I just really love when that step is done because it's amazing how the tree really does look flocked but for a lot less money than a flocked tree. Those can be pretty pricey, you know. But a couple of additional notes. Keep in mind that I have a seven foot slimline tree. So the number of feet of garland that you may need for your tree will depend on the size of it and the width of it as compared to mine. Also, you will notice that I have some natural holes and things in the tree. I don't have enough to cover every inch of it, and that's okay because with the amount of stuff that I put on the tree, I don't need to cover every inch of it. I will use those blanks as kind of natural places for me to put some of my bigger ornaments, some of my additional stems and bigger items that I have. So by the time we're done, it won't look like I have blanks where there's not any flocking. Now we're going to move on to the tree topper, and I have to admit this is my least favorite step of them all. It just always stresses me out. But I think it's important to do here because it really establishes the overall scale of the tree. So what I'm going to do for this tree is my typical tree topper where I like to have stems that come up out of the top and then some kind of transition into the rest of the tree. And the reason I like to do this type of tree topper is one, it does add some additional height. And then two, it gives a little bit more importance and weight to the tree without increasing the actual footprint of the tree itself. So what I've got for stems, I have three main types of stems. The first are red berries, which come from my winter woodland tree. Then I found these really cool buffalo check balls, and these are on wires that you can move around to open it up as much as you want. I liked those, but I realized I wanted a little bit more white to tie with the flocking in the tree. So that's when I found these berries that look like they're covered in snow. And what I'm going to do, I think, is use three each of these, and then I do have some extra of each of these that I'm going to incorporate into the rest of the tree to make sure it feels cohesive. But I realized after I pulled those three things together that all the shapes were very round, and I wasn't sure if I was going to like that. So I did pull some things out that I have in my collection just from another project. It's these curly sticks basically. So I may put some of these in just to provide a little bit more randomness to the shape of the top. And then how I'm going to affix the stems to the tree is with pipe cleaners. These are just easy to use, they're inexpensive, they come in a ton of different colors, and you can reuse them from year to year. Then I mentioned I like to use something to transition from the stems into the rest of the tree. So typically what I do are bows, and I think I'm going to do that here as well. So I've already made two of these bows. These are eight loop bows with kind of a mini loop right there to cover up the pipe cleaner, which is what I use once again to tie these off. And I've made two, but I do expect to use three, so I will quickly on a time lapse show you me making the third bow, although I do have a full bow making tutorial if you'd like to actually hear step-by-step -step instructions, so I'll link that down below. So I made it out of this ribbon. This is new this year. I picked this up when we uh, went down to Dallas and I went to Decorator's Warehouse. And so I'm going to put this at the base of the tree topper. And then I have more of this ribbon that I'll continue throughout the tree. But then I'm also going to use the buffalo check ribbon from my following tree. But I wasn't sure if I actually wanted it in the bows directly. Plus, this is such good quality thick ribbon that it was a really thick bow and so I thought rather than stressing out my hand and I wasn't even sure if I was going to use it in it, I would just add these later just as either single or double loop bows if I actually want it to look like it's in the bow itself. Otherwise I'll just have it kind of start underneath. So we're just going to play around and see what we think. Also you'll notice as I'm putting up the tree topper that the bows will come down about a foot from the top and so that's why I didn't need to use that flocked garland up that high because it's actually going to be pretty close to the base of the bows. And then you may remember we left some of the twinkle lights up here at the top. And so 
as I'm putting up the bows, I'm going to make sure to keep this at the top and then I'm going to weave this kind of throughout the tree topper so we have plenty of light up there as well. It's a trick that I've done before because I like to have some kind of light at the top of the tree, otherwise it's all bright and pretty and then it's like this dark mass up top. So this is one way you can get around that. topper done for now the next step will really help incorporate the tree topper into the rest of the tree and that's going to be adding all of our filler kinds of things like ribbon and garland I'm typically more of a ribbon kind of person but I do have a little bit of garland to add this once again is from my following tree and I have a few of these they're just the black and white wood beads but the reason I picked this up is I like the natural texture it gives to the tree so I'm gonna put these probably in kind of a horizontal zigzaggy pattern throughout the tree. Then I'm also going to come in with my ribbon and I'm going to intersperse ribbon throughout the tree and I'm going to do this more in a vertical pattern and I'm going to start a lot of the ribbon up at the top so I can have it coming out from the top and going down so that'll help integrate it and add a little bit more bulk around this layer right here and help kind of make that transition from the flocked area to the not flocked area. So to do that, I'm gonna take my ribbon into manageable lengths once again. So I've got the ribbon that I used in the bow, I've got my black and white buffalo check, and then I also have a couple of different burlaps, and I'm going to use all of these in the tree. So what I'm gonna do is probably pair up the buffalo check with the other ribbons because the buffalo check it just came from Amazon it wasn't very expensive it's not that great a quality which is fine but I can add it with other textures other weights to make it seem a little bit more impressive so I'll pair these up and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically work these vertically now and I'm going to take them and come down out of the tree topper to start tie it off with a branch and then zig down maybe in another direction and then once again tie it off. Then I'll come to another spot with maybe a different rib ribbon combination and I'll do the same thing in an alternating pattern. And I'll work my way around the tree using 24 to 36 or so inch length ribbons and then do that all the way on down. Sometimes I'll create little loops to help make the transition from one section to another and all of the tails will be cut in a fishtail just so they look a little more finished off if you see them. You'll see in some cases as I get going I decide to actually cross the different sets of ribbon across one another to make almost an X pattern. I also decide to add in a few loops at some of the points where it pushes in and, and ties off between zigzags. I also decide to add some of the buffalo check into the bow itself at the bottom of the tree topper. of both the buffalo check and this ribbon and I'm saving that for the very end when I see if there's anything that I need to move around, any gaps I need to fill, etc. So now the next step is going to be to fill in with my stems. And so what I've done for this is create a few clusters. And if you saw the video that I posted for my camo Christmas tree, then you will have seen step by step kind of the thought behind a cluster and how you can put one together. Um, and basically, here's uh, the main one that I've created. So these presents are actually something else that I bought from Decorator's Warehouse along with the ribbon. And then I had the greenery and the red berries and of course the white, you know, I'd gotten for up top. But I mentioned that I had some of these things so I could incorporate it into the tree. And so this is how I've decided to incorporate it. So I have a few like this and then I've also created a few smaller ones out of smaller greenery. And so what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to intersperse these throughout the tree in a zigzag pattern once again. So the smaller ones are going to be more for up towards the top and then the larger ones are going to be for further down the tree. And I'm going to place these in 
at a bit of a downward angle because this mimics the way branches fall, right? They have a tendency to start to come down when we're talking about an evergreen. So I'm going to find a good gap, a place that has a lot of space. I'm going to stick it in. If I need to, I can tie it off with the branch. And then from there, I'll come and I'll look for another spot that kind of zigzags down and then come down the other direction looking for a spot, etc. Keeping in mind the smaller ones for the top. Now we're finally on to the ornaments. And we're going to do the ornaments in a couple of steps as well. The first one being putting on the filler ornaments. And for this, I pretty much am going to use balls. So for balls, I've got a couple of different kinds. I've got some red in several different finishes, and then I've got some frosted white balls. And all of these came from Amazon, so super inexpensive, tons of different color options, all of that. But what I'm gonna do with the filler ornaments, since they're not that great a quality, which is fine, the purpose isn't really so much to be seen so much as to fill space and to help your eye not be able to see into the tree or certainly not through the tree. So most of these are gonna go more on the inside and I'll probably nestle these in some spaces so I may not even use ornament hooks for all of these. specialty ornaments. For these I don't have nearly as many but that's okay because they're going to be on the outside so they're really going to be the things that are showcased. So for this I've got a few burlap poinsettias, I've got some jingle bells and snowflakes and things that just kind of have a farmhouse feel. All of these things came from my winter woodland tree. And then I did purchase some new black and white buffalo check ornaments for the tree. So we'll put these on and come back once again. on and the tree is really pretty much come together. I have to say when you use a flocked tree or a fake flocked tree like this one it really does most of the work for you. It's amazing how much fancier your tree looks without necessarily that much effort. But now I do have a few scrap items left. Remember that I didn't use up all of my ribbon. I also have some of the items from some of my stem type filler stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to combine the step of taking a survey of the tree and seeing maybe what needs to move, you know, what looks a little out of balance and combine that with using these items to fill in where needed. We've made it to the last step and that's to put down the tree skirt and if you've seen any of my other Christmas tree videos then you know I don't like to have a bare bottom of the tree. So I've also got some things that I will put down with the tree skirt. I've got three different sizes of these furry trees and I have this deer so I will arrange them down below. So here is the finished tree. I have to admit it turned out even better than I was expecting. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, bye!